Hello everybody! Watch this video to find out how to create two RAID systems based on one controller. How to create RAID level 0 and 5 on an HP controller with the help of a RAID configuration utility. You'll also learn why people may need several arrays built on one controller and how to recover data from a RAID system based on HP P822 controller. Hello friends! If you need to recover deleted data, view or restore removed browsing history, Hetman Software Products will help you. Follow the link in the description, download the necessary program for free, install it and analyze the disk. The utility will show you the data you can recover, so you'll be able to view it or get it back. In our channel and blog you will find solutions to any problem, from installing an operating system or configuring it to fixing possible bugs and errors or optimizing mobile gadgets. Our specialists will answer any questions you ask in your comments under the videos or articles. Array Configuration Utility, ACU for short, is a tool for configuring disk arrays built on HP Smart Array Controllers. This utility lets you control and monitor the status of RAID controllers and disk arrays. You can download the program from the official website. It is available in two versions, the one with a graphical interface and the one designed for the command prompt. I'll show you how to create RAID systems with both versions of the utility. We'll be building the RAID arrays on a controller HP P822. The disks connected to the controller can be used to build one, two or even more RAID systems of any level. The number and level of disk arrays will only be limited by how many disks you have at hand. The only downside of this strategy is that you're going to lose data on both RAID systems the moment your controller breaks down. For illustration, we will create a RAID 0 for the operating system to boost read and write speed and a RAID 5 to store backups, archives and other important information. In this case, the failure of one array is not going to affect the work of the other one. For starters, let's explore how to create a RAID system with the help of the command prompt. The first step is to find the utility on the HPE official website and download it. Run the utility and check the information about our controller. In order to address a specific controller to build a RAID system, you need to identify the slot to which it is connected. This can be done with a command below. This command addresses all controllers and shows their status. As a result, you'll see the list of controllers and the slots where each of them belongs. Now you need to find out what disks are connected to the controller. Here is the command to use. The command addresses the controller in the first slot and displays all physical disks connected to it, as well as the drives united into a RAID system. When you identify the disks that the future array will consist of, you can start building this RAID. Use the command create. This command contains the following attributes. Controller slot 1. Device type to be created LD, which stands for logical disk. The disks to be included into this RAID can be presented as a list of drives. Or you can select all unassigned drives. Another part of the command is the RAID level to be created. Finally, you specify the size of the logical disk you want to create. You can either give it in megabytes or select all available capacity by adding max. To check if this command was successful, use another one to check. As a result, you'll get the information about all arrays created on this controller in a specific slot. As we can see, RAID 5 was created with the entire space provided by three disks. Due to peculiarities of its structure, the total capacity of a RAID 5 logical disk equals the combined capacity of all the physical disks minus the capacity of one of the disks. This RAID 5 was created with three drives of 300 GB each and the final capacity of the logical disk is 600 GB. The last step is to format the new logical disk in the disk management. Now, let's try to create a RAID system with the same utility, but using the version with a graphical interface. Run the utility and select the controller from this list. 
Below, click on the controller or on the unassigned rise and then click Create Array on the right. Select the disks that the future array will consist of and click OK. In the next window, hit the button Create Logical Drive. Now give the rate level, in my case that is zero. This rate type lets you boost read and write speed. In theory, this speed is supposed to increase as if multiplied by the number of actual disks in the array. Say, having two disks means you may get double speed. But in practice, the increase is not that high. After that, specify strip size. You can leave this setting at its default value. Logical disk size, set the size you need or select all the available space and enable or disable caching. When all settings are ready, click Save to confirm it. The RAID system is created and you can see it on the left side of the main window. To learn more about the array, select it and click More information. If your controller, operating system or disk suddenly fail, if the information is removed accidentally or drives are formatted by mistake, Hetman RAID Recovery is there to help you out. If your data was removed accidentally from the disk array or the disks were formatted, run the program, scan the logical disk, and recover the deleted files. They will be marked with the red cross. Select the ones you need and click Recovery, then specify where you want to save them. When the recovery process is complete, you'll find the files in the directory you have selected. When the operating system is damaged or one of the disks within the array fails, connect the disk to a Windows computer and run the recovery tool. Hetman RAID Recovery will scan the disks of your RAID system automatically to read all their data and then rebuild the disk array. As you can see, the program managed to identify both RAID systems built with this controller type even though the controller itself is currently missing. Right-click on the disk and choose Open. Then select the scan type. Click Next and then Finish when the process is over. You can see that the program finds all data remaining on the disk array even the files which have been removed without difficulty. Select the stuff you need and click Recovery. And specify where you want to save it, and we strongly recommend against saving data to the same disk you are recovering it from, so you should choose a different disk instead. When the path is ready, click Recover again. And when the operation is over, you'll find your files in the folder you have chosen. When a disk is damaged or service information is erased, the program may have difficulties with rebuilding the RAID automatically. However, you can do it manually if you know the properties of this damaged array. Open the RAID constructor and select Manual mode. Then. Fill in all the information you know, the RAID type, block order and size, add the disk it used to include, use the arrows to specify the order and replace the missing disks with empty drives by clicking the plus button. When all the properties are given, click Add for the RAID system to appear in the Drive Manager. Scan it and recover the information you need. And that is all for now. Hopefully this video was useful. Remember to click the like button and subscribe to our channel. Push the bell button to receive notifications and never miss new videos. Leave comments to ask questions. Thank you for watching and good luck.